This quote is most relevant to you as an honours or master's student as it highlights that your dissertation will gradually emerge through an unfolding process. As such, it's vital that you write regularly from the start of your research project in order to develop, refine and have clarity about your ideas. So here are Study Smarter's three top tips for writing your dissertation at UWA. Firstly, prepare to write by considering what your dissertation should contain and by developing your own writing style and writing habits. Secondly, reflect on your current writing strategies and consider techniques that may help you to overcome writer's block. Finally, write a better dissertation by remembering the important features of academic writing, including clarity and precision. Firstly, let's look at what's contained within Prepare to Write. In the first instance, it's important to consider what a dissertation is. A dissertation is a structured piece of writing that develops a clear argument in response to a central question or proposition. This proposition will be discussed, proven and defended throughout your dissertation. A dissertation is an extended piece of work, usually divided into chapters, which is the result of extensive research. Your dissertation provides evidence of your ability to carry out research and generally it should make some contribution to knowledge. This contribution may rest on the originality of your approach, the interpretation of your findings and in some cases the discovery of new facts. Throughout this screencast the term dissertation refers to the piece of writing you produce as a result of your research. A dissertation may also be referred to as a thesis, especially at the PhD level. However, the term thesis also has another meaning. It refers to an argument that is put forward and defended. In this sense of the word, Cantwell explains that a thesis represents the expression of a singular and embracive idea that permeates all aspects of the dissertation production. There is no dissertation without an argument. In speaking about this idea that Cantwell discusses, we are also referring to a centrally expressed research question. The research question, or hypotheses, is the single most important reason for the existence of your dissertation. It will guide your research. The thesis, or argument put forward, is your answer to the research question. As this example shows, you can see the question and the answer to the question that was contained within one honours dissertation. When preparing to write, it is useful to use your thesis as your central organising principle. Or your research can also be used in the early stages of the study before any findings come to light. You can use your research question and later in your thesis to guide your reading and your writing. Your thesis should appear throughout your dissertation. It should permeate your whole study. It usually appears in your title and is certainly contained within your abstract. It will feature in your first chapter where the background to the study is described and it will also reappear at the end of your dissertation. It should inform the choices you make as well. Your thesis will determine the framework for your literature review and will inform the choices you make when collecting data. Preparing to write also requires you to develop good writing habits from the start. You need to write regularly as research and writing and changes in your thinking will certainly overlap. You will also need to draft and redraft each chapter several times in accordance with feedback from your supervisor and as a result of your own editing process. It is valuable to familiarise yourself with good dissertations in your field and paying close attention to aspects such as design, structure and language 
will guide you particularly in the early stages of your research. Examining other dissertations will not only enable you to determine styles and conventions that are specific to your discipline, but will also allow you to find examples of writing styles you like and it will then allow you to adapt them so that eventually you develop your own style guide to clearly communicate your research. If you're finding it hard to find the right words to communicate your research, sentence templates can also be found online. The Academic Phrase Bank is just one of the sites where you can find an array of phrases to assist you in thinking about your writing and to use in your own work wherever possible. Reflecting on your current writing practices allows you to acknowledge what you're doing, what you're not doing, and what you could possibly do better. Take some time to think about how often you write. Do you write every day, in the morning, at night, or whenever you feel like it? Where do you write, and is this environment conducive to writing? Do you take a structured approach to your writing, or do you write freely in an attempt to clarify your thinking? Are your current approaches working well, or do you need to try new writing strategies? Many researchers attempt to write regularly, but claim they experience writer's block. Writers tend to get blocked when they believe they must work out exactly what they think before writing and get stuck at that point instead of using writing to sort out what they want to say. It can also occur when writers struggle to work out a point logically or scientifically or objectively and then get stuck at that point instead of working it out with words. People experience writer's block when they want to be sure before they write, rather than writing when they're not sure. It is also common to experience writer's block at the start of a research project, perhaps when you haven't found the answers yet and find it hard to visualise the end of the project. In instances such as these, researchers should use writing as their engine to their thinking. They should integrate writing into their thinking and learning and try to use writing to solve their problems or clarify their ideas. Here are some strategies for overcoming writer's block. Most of them are self-explanatory. However, if you haven't heard of free writing before, it simply means that you write for a set time, for instance five minutes, and you don't stop. You just keep writing. You write whatever comes into your head in relation to your research, and you don't have to stick to a single topic. Generative writing is a little different in that you try to stick to a single topic, possibly a topic that has resulted from your free writing. Outlining is another strategy you might try. It's useful to outline what you want to say by breaking down your writing into just the main points. These may be presented as subheadings. It's a lot easier to fill in missing parts than stare at a blank screen. Making connections between writing sessions is also useful because it involves setting yourself a specific writing task for your next session. This then helps you to focus quicker the next time you go to write. Develop a writing strategy that works for you. Try some of the strategies suggested until you feel you have a range of strategies that work best for you. Each time you write, consider the purpose of your writing session. Are you writing to warm up? Are you writing to develop your thinking, to complete a chapter, or perhaps for some other reason? You can also remain focused by asking yourself the following types of questions. These sort of questions can also be used as prompts for mind maps or lists to develop ideas for content for each chapter of your dissertation. The following quotes represent typical examiner's comments for dissertations that are rated highly. It is evident from these comments that a key aspect of an excellent dissertation alongside good research is clear, logical, precise writing. 
you should aim for a dissertation that is easy to read, interesting and intellectually rigorous. Examiners don't watch you undertake your research and all they have to go on is your dissertation, so it's essential that your writing is cohesive, logical, analytical, relevant and hopefully a pleasure to read. And remember, the purpose of your dissertation is to convince your reader that the conclusion you reach on the basis of the evidence you present is acceptable and satisfying. This can only be achieved through good academic writing. Good academic writing should be precise and clear. While there will no doubt be complexity in your ideas, the manner in which you communicate your research should be simple. An effective structure with clear illustrations will ensure that your logic and evidence are convincing and easy to comprehend. It is also vital that you carefully edit your work as problems relating to poor spelling, poor grammar and poor referencing are exceedingly annoying for examiners. Readers also like sentences that are brief and precise. Take a moment to read this sentence and consider what could be done to make it briefer and more precise. If you look at example B, you will notice that the long sentence in the first example has been split into three shorter sentences that each focus on a single point. These briefer sentences make the writing more precise and the content is a lot easier to digest. In addition to avoiding sentences that are too long, you should also avoid sentences that are unnecessarily wordy. In this example, the first sentence has a long lead that doesn't really get you anywhere. The second sentence is more concise, yet it still conveys the same meaning. Incomplete sentences make it difficult for the reader to follow your logic. In this example, it is unclear what the word it is referring to at the start of the second sentence. Avoid using pronouns at the start of a sentence unless the noun it is referring to is at the end of the sentence preceding it. Sentences with multiple meanings or interpretations should also be avoided. The first sentence needs to be more specific and the word chilled should be avoided as it is quite ambiguous. The second sentence, patient 3 had an incurable disease, leaves the reader asking what disease. Don't leave your reader asking such questions. In addition to clear sentences, clear focused writing has a clear paragraph structure. Paragraphs break up the information you want to present to your reader, structuring it in such a way that it guides your reader through a series of ideas. Ensure your paragraphs contain a structured group of sentences that all pertain to the same topic. This topic should be introduced in the first sentence of the paragraph and elaborated on in the sentences that follow. When editing your writing, try summarising the topic of each paragraph in the margins. See if your ideas follow a logical progression and if the links between paragraphs are clear. We hope you've enjoyed this Study Smarter screencast and remember you can write a better dissertation by preparing to write and writing regularly. Being aware of and using strategies that help you to overcome writer's block and engaging in good academic writing that is clear, logical and precise.